Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at how you can make a buffer from a strong base and a weak acid. Now normally when you make a buffer you say you would take a weak acid and its salt and you would mix them together uh, and you would make a buffer. So that's all you need to make a buffer. But you can actually make um, the salt by mixing a strong base and a weak acid together. And provided you mix them in the right ratio and the right proportions, you can actually make a buffer. Um, and it's really simple to actually do. And I'm going to try and explain it using these diagrams here to show how you can make that. Um, and there will be calculations that follow on from this as well. But if we start with the basic reaction, so we have an acid and a base, uh, and that will make salt plus water. So that's just a basic standard chemical reaction. Now, what we can say is if we have a small amount of a strong base, so for example, sodium hydroxide, and uh, we react that with an excess of a weak acid, um, then we will make a buffer. And what we mean by excess is that we have um, more uh, of the acid than we do of the sodium hydroxide, which is the base. So I've got um, three beakers here. I'm just going to show you how we can actually make it in diagrammatic form. So we've got our um, weak acid here, which is ethanoic acid. And you can see we have a certain volume of ethanoic acid. And if we react that with sodium hydroxide, you can see we have much, much, much less volume of sodium hydroxide. So we only need a small amount. And this will allow us to have an excess of ethanoic acid as well. And bear in mind, this is a strong base. You won't need a lot of this anyway to neutralize your weak acid. Um, and then we actually form a salt, which is our sodium ethanoate in this case, uh, and water. Uh, and this is a neutral um, solution that we've made. But actually, by mixing these two together, we form a salt and we have our acid as well. And because we have a weak acid and its salt, we can actually create a buffer. So we're just going to try and explain this. So you can see here we have an excess we have an excess amount of acid. So we have a large volume of acid. And our sodium hydroxide is actually in a small quantity. Now what happens is your sodium hydroxide will actually react with your ethanoic acid and it will form a salt. But if you only have a small amount of sodium hydroxide, it will only react with a proportion or portion of your ethanoic acid. So you'll still have quite a few ethanoic acid molecules left over that are unreacted. But any sodium hydroxide that has gone in there, all of it would have reacted to form your salt. So that's crucial because actually um, we, can, uh, we can use that in calculations, which is in um, another video. So we've got um, all of this is reacted. So I'll write that on there. So all of it's reacted to make uh, to make your A minus, or how would you describe this as your salt? So it's going to be CH3COO minus and A plus. Um, so we can assume that actually all of this, whatever the concentration is of this, will equal the concentration of your salt. Um, now, and then your salt will obviously dissociate. So I'm going to write our two buffer equations here to show you. So um, we'll start off with our acid. So because it's in excess, in this beaker here, we will have some ethanoic acid that's left over because not all of it has reacted. So we're going to write that there. So CH3, COOH, uh, and that will dissociate to form your ethanoate ion, which is that, and H+. Now, it weakly dissociates, so we can say we have a high concentration of this. So put that there as high. And we have low concentrations of these two here because it weakly dissociates. Um, and then what we can say is obviously because our sodium hydroxide has made the salt, we can say that also in this beaker here, we also have um, CH3COO minus Na plus. So there's our sodium ethanoate. That's the salt that was made uh, when we added our sodium hydroxide. And salts readily dissociate. So when they're in solution, they break up quite readily. And so we form them ions there. Now, if we were to write their relative concentrations down, we can say that actually this would be virtually zero because it dissociates fully. And we can say that actually the concentrations of the other two are very high because it dissociates fully. So you can see here what we've got is we've got an excess of acids. So that's why this is here in this beaker. Um, and that will dissociate to form this and this. We also have some salt forms. Now, the amount of salt 
will equal the amount of sodium hydroxide that we've actually added, because what we assume is that sodium hydroxide reacts with uh, all the sodium hydroxide reacts with your ethanoic acid to produce your salt. Uh, and then what we assume is that actually our salt dissociates fully and um, to form your ethanoate ion, which is A minus. Now, this is really, really useful because it allows us to calculate um, pHs of uh, buffer solutions when we mix them from these two um, chemicals here. So, and there will be calculations on that as well. Just click on the link below uh, and you can see the calculation between a, a weak acid and a strong base. Um, so the assumption um, that we make is that actually the amount of sodium hydroxide uh, equals the amount of this, which is A minus. And finally, just to link this with a titration as well, um, you could mix this in a um, sodium hydroxide and your acid could mix in terms of a titration. So if you added small amounts of sodium hydroxide into, like right at the start, you add the small amounts of sodium hydroxide with your acid in your conical flask, and um, you'll notice that from your titration curve, you actually get a very almost flat line that's rising very, very gradually, and despite the fact you're adding sodium hydroxide. And the reason why is because initially you're actually creating a buffer um, and that's resisting the change in pH and it's not going to increase. And that obviously is true when you add small amounts of sodium hydroxide. But obviously as the titration proceeds, you're adding more and more and more sodium hydroxide until eventually, obviously, the buffer uh, will not work. It's, um, there isn't enough, for example, we're adding OH minuses here. There isn't enough ethanoic acid to replace the H pluses that our hydroxide is reacting with, and eventually um, the buffer breaks and we get an end point. And that's why the pH of our um, titration shoots up um, because we've got an excess of hydroxide ions at that point. Um, but yeah, that just shows you how it links in with your titration curve as well. But um, there is a big calculation that's linked with this, like I say. Um, you know, if you have a look on the playlist, it will be on there. Um, but other than that, um, that's all it is. Just bear that in mind. And... Um, Hope that helps. Bye.